When I moved home about four years ago, I was helping a friend out. He was doing a little mini documentary on what does it mean to be a rainbow wahine, especially a volleyball player. And Beth McLaughlin, who was the last that we interviewed, who was the team captain of the first team in 1974, she played for the first few years, she begins to tell stories that I had never heard in my life. I grew up in Hawaii, you know, watched the girls play, was a big fan, but I never heard some of these more intimate details of what it was like being a woman at that time. The inequalities, the overcoming stories, the challenges. She introduced me to the name Dr. Donis Thompson, who was the first women's athletic director here at UH. As she's telling me these stories, she's crying, and I'm beginning to see this great sports inspirational story, you know, and I'm going, wow, what is this that's happened in my own backyard with me growing up as a young person? I never heard it. The name Patsy Mink came up, and then Title IX, which I confess I'd never heard of before, and, um, and then the story began to grow from there. So I was extremely excited that here was an untold story that happened right here in Hawaii and no one had really ever heard of it before. It was because of Patsy's experiences of being denied, not even near equal, told she could not go to medical school. If there was a fighter that was Patsy Mink on, on the floor of Congress to get Title IX passed. Donis Thompson was an African-American woman born into a situation of incredible oppression. So she was really a pioneer in wanting to take her Title IX money and pour it right into women's volleyball ASAP. Well, we got a lot of pushback from the men. They felt that the funds were going to be diluted. At the University of Hawaii in the early 70s, yeah, it was a bit of a, are you kidding me? We're struggling for our own stuff, and you want what from where, you know? I needed to figure out, is this real? Is there enough here for me to begin to dedicate time, energy, resource to a story like this? And I reached out to a friend of mine, Ryan Kalei Suji, who has now become a producer on the film, and he had been an assistant coach with Dave Shoji on the team for about eight years or so. So I really connected with Dave, I did an audio interview, I reconnected with Beth and did a lengthy interview. Connected with Marilyn Moniz, Kaho Ohana Ohana, who's carried the torch of Dr. Donis Thompson. She then began to give me names, and those names connected with more names and more names, and we grabbed equipment, we just started going from there. It was like Indiana Jones. When you do a documentary, it's like, put that hat on, because there's always something under another rock. The women's history of equality, um, and opportunities, which really plays tightly with the civil rights movement of the 60s. and Educational and athletic opportunities for women, I mean, it was nowhere near what it's like today. The percentage of United States law school graduates that were women was only 7%. For medical school, it was only 9%. This is the backdrop of a story that really then takes place from 1972 to 1977. This is when Title IX was passed in 1972 and the beginning of the Wahine program, Donis Thompson begins. She becomes the first women's athletic director and then hires Dave Shoji in 75. And yet, media-wise, yeah, it's just women's athletics, no one cares. I remember thinking, wow, how come they have so much more than we do? Media wouldn't give us the time of day. They didn't even come to see what we had to offer. It was just... I'm not going to go watch girls. Athletics has just changed the landscape for girls and women in this country. Title IX played the biggest part in that. And we felt like people starting a brand new era. Title IX was like, wow, a whole new world. They win the national championship in 79, and then of course 82, 83, 87. Today we go, oh wow, they're incredible, they're amazing. In fact, they're the only revenue gener they're the only program at UH that actually pays for itself. That's what Donis did. She had to capture the heart of people. You don't do that with legislation. You can't just do that by passing a law. You need true heroes with vision. Arriving on campus and um, seeing an African-American woman in power was a surprise. I could no longer help and tolerate sexism that was so prevalent at that particular time. What Donna saw and what was possible, most people couldn't. And she drove to make that happen and played a very vital role. That's why she deserves, Patsy Mink deserves, these women of Hawaii, the small state, had a vision that would change the landscape of women's sports in America forever. Documentary filmmaking as well, we've discovered, is, is an incredible tool and, and not just artistic, but really a way to capture legacy and stories that otherwise we would lose. So you have to be able to inspire people, you have to be able to motivate them for years at a time to jump on board with your vision and to see this through to the end. They have the opportunity to impute within people very deep, profound values of justice because they know what it is to not have.
I was so blown away that people were moved emotionally to the degree that they were. I really wasn't ready for that, especially early on in my drafts, draft six, draft seven. Suddenly people were like crying and sharing feedback and how it moved them. And we are dealing with issues that I think are deep and social and, and connect with people, um, as well as overcoming stories, inspirational stories, but it really exceeded my expectation. And another reason I'm excited is not just because the story is local. I think every person in Hawaii needs to hear this story. We need to be proud of the heroes that we have here. But there's also a national impact because of Title IX. And Patsy Mink impacted the nation with Title IX, her as a champion and a co-author. Um, and that has revolutionized women's opportunities in every sector of society. We were just forward thinking enough in the 70s, so out of the box thinking to, to have these kinds of heroes that really impacted the nation and, and really the world in many ways when it comes to women's athletic and educational opportunities. Title.